All right, good morning class. This is Mr. Manson, and this is today's video lesson for today being Thursday, March 19th, 2020. Getting on into lesson 11, we're going to be talking today all about white light. We'll explain what exactly that means and why white light is special and different from all the other colors in just a second. Before I do that, I do want to make a shout out to a few different students. Uh, yesterday, when you watched the video, there was a point where I said you can make some extra scholar dollars if you took your notes in your notebook, you took a picture of it, and you sent those to me by uploading them on the Google Forms at the end of the uh, class for Google Form. Well, as some of you probably noticed, um, I changed the Google Form and I took away that button for you to upload the picture of your notes and send it to me because for some reason that was breaking the form and making it not work so well. So I had to get rid of it. So there wasn't really an easy way for people to send me their notes. But I did have one, two, three students who found another way, some way, somehow, to send Mr. Manta their notes, either by having their parents send it through a text or by emailing me in one way or another. And I want to shout out those three students for, for finding a way to do so. Uh, we've got Adon's notes over here. They're looking great. It's one solid page of notes, including some diagrams, some answers to questions. I got Michelle's right here, uh, including diagrams of light waves that even include information that Mr. Manta forgot that didn't even highlight that she took from the other diagrams that I had shown and I had cadences right here which very clearly lays out the key points I can see them right there without even having to go too far all very excellent examples of how to write your notes out for science class and none of them take really more than a page that does include the key information Here's what I'm going to do from now on. I do want to see some more examples of folks with their excellent notes, but I don't want to try to do it on the Google form again because that was making it not work last time. So here's the new deal. If you want some scholar dollars and you want to show off your notes and maybe have me include them in the next video, then you're gonna I'm gonna have you just email a picture of them to me. My email address is zmanta at glachicago.org, and if I get your notes, you will have some scholar dollars on your paycheck at the end of the week, and I might show them if they're really impressive on tomorrow's video lesson. Now, coming back to today, we're going to recap where we left off yesterday. We learned yesterday all about laser lights and why they're so special, and we learned that different colors of light have different features. We learned that light can kind of be understood as a wave, this thing that travels by going up and down and up and down and up and down, and different colors of light are different colors because they have different wavelengths. So violet light has the shortest wavelength up here, and the waves are really packed really tightly together. And red light has the longest wavelength down here, and the waves are more spread out, and then all the other colors are in between. We talked about also that those things correspond with energy. So the shorter your wavelength is, the less energy a wave, ha uh, a, wa a light wave has, and the longer it is. Oh, I'm sorry, I mixed that up. The shorter your wavelength is, it's a very easy one to mix up. The more energy light has. So violet light has the most. Oh my goodness, my handwriting is getting worse every time. Whereas red light has the least energy, right? That's what we learned yesterday. So, knowing that information, remembering what we learned yesterday, today we actually have a quick do now. Oh my goodness, yes, we can still have do nows even though class is on Google Classroom now. I got four questions for you right here. You don't need to put these online anywhere. You can just write out one, two, three, and four in your science notebook and answer these questions on paper. This is just to help you kind of quiz yourself. I'm going to pause the video. Or I'm going to ask you actually to pause the video right here, answer these four questions, and then when we bring it back, I'll show the answers. Pausing the video now. And hopefully unpausing now so we can show the answers. First question is, what is labeled A in the light wave diagram over here? A is telling me the amplitude. Second question, what is labeled B? B over here is the wavelength. That's the length from one crest, one peak, to another crest over here. That's B. Three is asking me nothing to do with the diagram, just which has a longer wavelength, red light or violet light. Red light has the longest wavelength. And then four is asking which has more energy, red light or violet light. We learn that violet light has the most energy. That is because if we pull our diagram back up, you can see that violet light has the shortest wavelength, which means it has the most energy, whereas red has the least energy. All right, moving on to some new material for today. We're going to introduce today's whole lesson on white light by stepping into our the time machine that is our imagination and rewinding all the way back to when you were about the age of this young lad right here. Now, 
I don't know who taught you guys, who is your teacher for like first grade or kindergarten or whatever it may be, but I'm willing to guess that at some point when you are about as old as this guy is right here, you at least got a chance sometime to, to paint or to finger paint like he's doing right here. And if your teacher gave you some good lessons when you were painting, they probably taught you something, like they showed you a diagram, then they looked like this, that explained how all the different colors of paint can combine to form new colors. They talked about how we have three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. That if you mix yellow and blue, you'll get green paint. If you mix blue and red, you'll get violet or purple paint. Or if you mix yellow and orange, then you'll, I'm sorry, yellow and red, then you'll get orange paint right here. If you mix all three of them together, then things would get kind of messy. And you'd get some kind of just like brown or black smudgy paint in the middle of your paper. And if you were like Mr. Manta, I wasn't really the best artist growing up. I would often end up just mixing all my paints together and get some washed out gray, black kind of color thing like this. Now, I want you to keep that in mind as we go into today's lesson, because we're going to be talking today about combining different colors, not of paint today, but different colors of light, and seeing what colors they make when they all mix together. Now we're coming back to the future. We're going to talk about this fellow named Styropyro we saw on YouTube yesterday and actually get a chance to watch one of his videos, where he is going to take some different colored laser beams and combine them. So we're not going to watch the whole video. I want to kind of get you up to speed and kind of introduce what he talks about in the first three minutes because we're going to jump in at about the three minute mark. The basic idea is that this guy gets three different lasers, a red laser, a green laser, and a blue laser. And he aims all of them together into this cube looking thing right here. And this cube is very special because it can take the laser beams that are coming into it and bounce them out in a certain direction so that they come back out of this side no matter what side he shoots them in from. So that green beam bounces through and comes out, out right here. The red laser beam bounces through and comes out, out here. And the blue laser beam is coming out and bouncing out right there. Now, what he's going to do is adjust each of these three laser beams so that their output, these beams that are coming out, are all perfectly lined up, like they're on top of each other. And he's going to see what happens. That is going to be our classwork question number one. I'm asking you to make a prediction this time. Go ahead and either write this down in your science notebook or open a new tab to uh, where it, on the classwork page to be answering classwork question number one, making a prediction. When Styropyro combines the three laser beams into one unified beam shooting out of this cube, what color do you think it will be? Type out your prediction. Uh, pause the video. Type out your prediction. Do that now. And unpausing the video, we're going to move it forward. We're actually going to get a chance to play this video and see what it is that happens. Let's find out. If it wants to load for me, come on. Time for alignment. And this part can be tricky because I want the beams to overlap as much as possible. So I've dialed back the laser's power a bit for safety, and I added a bit of fog to bring out the beams. This makes alignment a lot easier. So after a few shims and tiny adjustments, they're nicely aligned now. The beams overlap almost perfectly, but I still have to calibrate the colors. Now I want to point out that because this driver's analog, the amount of colors that this setup can produce is actually infinite. So it's way, way better than the puny 16.8 million colors that your silly monitor can produce. And now, I should say that even though the amount of colors that this laser can produce is infinite, it still cannot produce all possible colors. And there it is, an actual white laser beam. Now, the color of the beam in the air versus the spot it produces are actually going to be slightly different due to scattering effects, but they're still pretty close to pure white light there. And now, it's really odd seeing this white beam traveling through the air when I'm so used to seeing super rich colors being produced by lasers. So it's an odd feeling. But it's a so look at that. By combining a red, green, and blue laser beam, he produced a new white laser beam. Looks pretty cool. Now, that's interesting because it teaches us something. What did we learn from that video? Well, we learned that the way that colors of light combine is different from how colors of paint combine. On the left side here, you're seeing the way that paints combine, what you learned all the way back in kindergarten or first grade, that you have these three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, that they combine to make these colors and eventually make brown or black in the middle. 
that's different from light in a couple ways. First of all, when we're talking about light, the primary colors for light are still red and blue, but instead of yellow, we have green as a primary color. That means when we mix together red, green, and blue, we can make all of the other colors because green is our primary color. Second of all, they combine in kind of different ways. So mixing red and green gives us yellow light. Mixing blue and red gives us violet light, which is the same as for paint. And mixing green and blue gives us this color called cyan. That's kind of in between green and blue. The really interesting part, though, and the part that I want you to focus on for the most, is what's in the middle right here. That when we combine green, red, and blue light, it produces white light in the middle. It's totally different from paint, because in paint, when you mix all the different colors together, it kind of becomes black. The opposite happens with light. It actually becomes white. That means that white light is made of all the other colors put together. Now, there's a few different ways you can demonstrate this. This is a screenshot from a video where this guy has a projector set up so that the projector is shining a square of red light right here. It's shining some green light and some blue light. And you can see right in this middle area where all those three colors overlap, the color that you get when those mix together is bright white light, just like the diagram that we saw on the right side of the screen. One way that this is really interesting, that this is useful, and the ways that scientists and engineers have used this to make technology, is that they actually use this fact when they're making screens, like the very phone screen that you might be holding right now. If you've ever wondered how a screen works, a computer screen, a TV screen, a phone screen, Basically, if you zoomed in super, super close onto a screen of any kind, you would eventually see that it's made up of pixels. Pixels are like these tiny little squares of light that make up the screen. And if we zoom in all the way, we will actually see that each pixel is actually three different colors. You have a red, green, and blue light. By turning on those three lights and changing their power kind of up and down for each of the different colors, the screen is able to produce all of the different colors that you might get on a computer screen because they can combine those three colors to make any colors that they need. When they turn all of them on all the way, the screen looks white. They turn all of them off all the way, then the screen just looks black. I have one more animation that you can watch a few times as this plays showing what it looks like when you zoom in super close to a screen. This is zoomed out. If you zoom in, you'll see it's made up of all those tiny little pixels, those little blocks of light. The reason that we don't need any white pixels, we only need red, green, and blue, is because we can make white just by combining them. By turning all three of those colors on, it creates white light. White light is made of all the other kinds put together. Here's the key point from all of that, and definitely what you want to get down into your notes. White light is what we see when all the other colors of light are combined. When we have a spotlight like this that's shining white light, you might think, like based on our lesson yesterday, that if you zoomed in really close in that white light, what you would see are white light waves, the way that it is for all the other colors. But that's not true. There's no such thing as a white light wave. They don't exist. Instead, what you would see if you zoomed in on this light is all of the other colors of light, all of their waves, all combined together. You'd see red waves overlapping with yellow waves, overlapping with green and blue and purple and orange waves, all mixed together. And when all of those different colors of light mix together, then what we see is this bright white light. Now, we learned that by talking about laser beams, but it's actually not true just for laser beams. It's true for all of the regular light the regular white light that you see around you from lamps and from the sunlight. Oh yeah, here. Just like we saw with this guy's laser beams, we combine all those other colors to produce white light. But you still have the three different colors going on in here. It just looks white. Before we move on, I want to hit class classroom question two. Make sure we're on the same page about this. Which of these two diagrams is accurately showing the way that colors of light combine? Should answer your question two, multiple choice, right now as a diagram A or diagram B. Pause the video, do that now. And we're going to go ahead and unpause and keep moving forward. The correct answer is that diagram A. I know that because when all the three colors combine, it makes white light. Unlike paint, where the three colors combined makes black or brown. Now, I want to flash back to yesterday. Yesterday we said that we were going to start 
we started our lessons on life by learning about lasers because lasers are actually pretty simple that a lamp with white light is more difficult to understand than lasers which are simple well now today we can finally come back and understand how the white light that comes out of lamps or the sun or any light that's in the ceiling actually works we've learned that now these white light is made of the beams of all the other colors all put together so if you have a lamp in your house like this one right here right now that lamp is turned off we're going to turn it on and it's going to shine out what we consider to be white light but that normal white light that's around us all the time is really made up of all of the colors so I'm going to turn the lamp on and to your eyes it would look like this the room is just lit up it's bright it's white it's a little bit orange but we consider that white light if we could zoom, like if we had a superpower and you could actually see the individual light waves going on and flying through the air what you would actually see would look more like this it's beautiful isn't it you have all these different colors of light beaming out of this one single lamp because white light is made of all of the different colors all put together there are no white light waves white light is instead made of all the other colors put together now hopefully that makes sense now that we know that white light is made of all that other stuff we have a fun question we can ask if we can put different colors of light waves together to make white light can we do the opposite too can we pull white light apart into its different colors instead of putting those colors together to make white can we like pull white apart and separate out the different colors well the answer is actually yes that is what a prism does you may or may not have ever seen this word prism before you should know what it is after this lesson that's definitely a word that will end up being on tests at some point this thing right here is an example of a prism it's an kind of an angled triangular shaped piece of glass the way a prism works oh and you've probably heard that term before from like math class a rectangular prism this would be a triangular prism if you have a triangular prism and you shine a beam of white light maybe sunlight or a flashlight into it the light as it goes through that prism gets pulled apart because in this white light you have all the different colors going on you got red you got blue you got green all coming in in this white light but they're combined together so it looks white when it passes through the prism all those colors get pulled apart into their separate colors and what you end up seeing looks like a rainbow when you hold a piece of paper on the other side of it you end up seeing a rainbow and the rainbow is actually pulling apart the white light into all of its separate colors this is a picture of what a prism looks like you can see that a light beam is shining in probably from an open window over here and when the the light passes through the prism and then shoots to the back wall behind it you get what looks like a rainbow that's all the colors of light being pulled apart from each other this is a really helpful animation that kind of shows you in even more detail what's going on all of the colors are coming into the prism and they look like white light when they're all lined up together but as they're passing through these different waves that you can see also have different wavelengths get separated out so when they're coming back out the far side of the prism you can see the separate colors that have gotten pulled apart into a rainbow in case you're one oh wait well, yeah, before i say that we'll make this into a key point this is what you should get written down in your notes a prism pulls apart or pulls white light apart into the color light waves that make it up in case you're wondering yes this is in fact how rainbows in the real light in the real world actually form this is a cool clip of someone taking a picture of a rainbow from on top of a crane so you can see that uh, it actually go a rainbow is actually a full circle you usually just see a half circle because it's like cut off by the ground but a rainbow is like a physical thing that exists somewhere out there on the landscape it's a trick that the light plays on your eyes here you can really see that going on this person can see a rainbow because there's a bunch of rain and moisture and fog that's in the air and the sunlight is passing through it and all that rain and moisture is kind of acting like a prism the same way that this prism right here is making a rainbow by pulling light apart the rain and the water in the air here are making a rainbow by separating out what they call it, the fancy word is refracting all the light that's passing through it and that's why you can see a rainbow like that it's pretty cool all right folks that is all that we have for today you can go ahead and close out the video and move on to your exit tickets 
Uh, I want to give you a heads up that yes, there is homework today, but the homework itself is also a video. It's only like three minutes long, and then there are some questions that you should answer along with it. And like I said, I'm just going to start throwing out random things at the end of our videos to talk about in case you're bored over break, not break, over remote learning time. Uh, and today's very random cool things that I was talking about rainbows made me think of one of my favorite songs. It's a song by Kermit the Frog, and it's called The Rainbow Connection. I suggest you go ahead and look it up on YouTube. It's a very sweet song. Um, and that should be all that we got for today. I can show you for today's homework. You're going to come to Unit 5, Lesson 11, White Light Video. Watch the video here. And then the homework questions are separate. That is all there is to it. All right, folks. So long. Have a good one.